a unique jet aircraft built for the United States Army. A fixed-wing plane capable of high subsonic speed, plus the ability to take off and land vertically. This is the Army XV-4A Hummingbird, built by the Lockheed Georgia Company. Now undergoing flight testing, this small two-place mid-wing monoplane introduces a different vertical lift principle, known as the augmented jet ejector. Its use will provide an entirely new capability to the Army. As an unusually simple VTOL jet, it can live with the troops, have quick reaction and the best chance of survival under the direct control of the field commander. This unique system, which utilizes the same jet engines for forward propulsion as well as for vertical lift, was conceived and tested by Lockheed Georgia engineers in 1958. To determine the feasibility of the Hummingbird system, the Army contracted with Lockheed in 1961 to design and build two research airplanes. A basic objective was an airframe design to match the simplicity of the jet ejector system, and one which could easily evolve into a rugged, low-cost production vehicle. Thus, with but a few exceptions, the research versions use conventional materials, equipment, design, and fabrication techniques. The XV-4A is only 33 feet in length, with a wingspan of 25 feet. The maximum vertical takeoff weight in this research version is 7,200 pounds. The empty weight, just under 5,000 pounds. The design of the Hummingbird provides for side-by-side -side seating of the pilot and observer, with ejection seats for escape at any speed or altitude. Nose and aft compartments are provided for flight test and other equipment. The ejector ducting for the vertical propulsion system is located in the upper center fuselage. Just below are three fuel cells with a total capacity of 303 gallons. The operational heart of the Hummingbird, its ability to provide vertical lift to a fixed wing airplane, lies in Lockheed's augmented jet ejector vertical lift system. Its outstanding advantage, simplicity. Aside from the two Pratt & Whitney JT-12 engines mounted just outboard of the fuselage and above each wing root, the lift system has but two major moving parts. The diverter valves located just aft of each engine. Inboard is a manifold leading to the nozzle branches. The nozzles are directed downward over two mixing chambers, which are actually large slots in the mid-fuselage section. For horizontal flight, the diverter valves are positioned to allow engine exhaust gases to flow aft in the normal manner. For vertical flight, the valves are repositioned to direct the exhaust gases into the center manifold system in the mid-fuselage. From here, the gases flow through the nozzles and are ejected downward into the mixing chambers. The airplane's engines have a static sea level thrust rating of 3,300 pounds each. At the nozzle area, they deliver a total of just under 6,000 pounds. This, of course, is not sufficient to lift the Hummingbird's weight of 7,200 pounds, since a pound of thrust is needed to lift each pound of weight. The additional thrust is supplied by the augmented jet ejector vertical lift system. The ejector chambers are equipped with hydraulically operated doors at the bottom and top of the fuselage, which are opened prior to vertical flight. As the hot, High-velocity engine exhaust gases are ejected into the chambers. A low-pressure or venturi effect is created, which induces a large volume of outside air into the chambers. As the engine gases, the primary flow, mix with the outside air, the secondary flow, overall gas temperature, pressure, and velocity decrease. However, as the secondary air volume is over five times that of the primary flow, the total mass is enormously increased with a resultant increase in total thrust. By utilizing this simple jet pump principle, engine thrust at the nozzles can be increased or augmented by approximately 40%, thus the name Augmented Jet Ejector.
During VTOL and low-speed flight regimes, when the aerodynamic control surfaces are ineffective, airplane stability control is provided by means of reaction jets. For pitch and yaw, reaction nozzles in the nose and in the tail of the plane are used. These are supplied with engine exhaust gases through ducts, which extend from the main manifold. To provide roll control, other reaction nozzles are located within pods at the wing tips and supplied with engine compressor bleed air. All such controls, of course, are actuated by the pilot through normal movements of the stick or rudder pedals. As previously indicated, the introduction of cooler outside air reduces the temperature and velocity of the resultant airflow. Thus, the ground blast problem normally expected with a jet engine is greatly reduced with the Hummingbird system. On July 7, 1962, just one year and one week after the contract was awarded, the XV-4A Hummingbird made its first conventional flight. At military power, the airplane is capable of an initial sea level rate of climb in excess of 18,000 feet per minute. Although the present research aircraft have an altitude capability of 40,000 feet and a limit speed of Mach 0.68 or 450 knots, most of the flights have been conducted between 10,000 and 20,000 feet. The maximum speed attained was 300 knots. Normal approach speeds are 115 to 120 knots, with touchdown between 105 and 110 knots. After completing eight conventional flights, the first aircraft was returned to the shop for installation of the vertical flight system component. During the latter part of 1962 and early 1963, the airplane was subjected to a series of tethered tests. This work was done to check out the reaction controls and to provide the pilot with some feel for the control system prior to entering free vertical flight. Following the first free hover on May 24, 1963, 26 different hover tests were then accomplished in preparation for follow-on testing in the transition regime. The clothing of this ground crewman, incidentally, illustrates an earlier point. It is barely affected because the downwash from the Hummingbird's ejector system flows to each side of the plane rather than to the front or to the rear. Having gained experience in hovering the Hummingbird, the pilots then began to investigate low-level maneuvering. Here, the execution of a 360-degree turn provides a positive demonstration of stability and control response. During these initial low-level flights, ASE, or automatic stabilization equipment, was used to help the pilot maintain lateral and longitudinal stability. Further testing has resulted in a significant reduction in automatic stabilization assistance. For the next step toward transition, the Hummingbird moved to the regular runway adjacent to the Lockheed Georgia Company plant. All initial flights were made over concrete runways. However, as the test program continues, operation over various surfaces will be investigated. Here the Hummingbird accelerated from hover to 74 knots, with both engines thrusting through the vertical system. This is the first of three phases in the transition sequence from vertical to horizontal flight. The second phase would begin at this point by diverting one engine from the vertical to the horizontal mode. On November 8, 1963, the Hummingbird made its first complete transition. After a vertical takeoff, it transitioned to horizontal flight. Upon completion of an 11-minute test, it transitioned from horizontal to vertical flight and made a hover landing. This is the operational sequence for transition. The ejector chamber doors are opened and the thrust diverted to the vertical mode. The nose of the plane is raised and by the application of power, the plane ascends vertically to a height sufficient to clear adjacent obstacles. The nose is then lowered to provide a forward thrust component. After reaching a speed of 75 to 80 knots, the wing is utilized to provide a portion of the lift required 
by raising the nose to give a positive angle of attack. Now the plane can be supported by wing lift and by one engine in the vertical mode. Then the first engine is diverted rearward to provide further horizontal acceleration. Speed is increased to 115 to 120 knots and the second engine is diverted from the vertical to the horizontal mode. The ejector doors are closed and the hummingbird is in normal jet flight. The takeoff transition complete. Army flight testing and further research are continuing at the Lockheed Georgia Company plant. Improvement in lift capability and further testing are key program objectives. A number of design changes have been incorporated since the Hummingbird flight test began, but none has complicated the basically simple jet ejector system. Just as the basic concept remains unchanged, so too does the Lockheed goal remain unchanged. To build for the Army, a practical, reliable, low-cost vertical lift system, specifically designed for field operations. This is the XV-4A Hummingbird, a product of Lockheed and Army Research.